President. Before we get into the stimulus project as promised, you, CNN's Ed Henry yes, reports President. tonight that President Obama is set to announce a three-year freeze on non-security discretionary spending. That move would freeze discretionary spending at $447 billion. Joining us now to talk about that and to debate the stimulus and whether it's actually working, Robert Reich. He was Secretary of Labor in the Clinton administration, now Professor of Public Policy, University of California, Berkeley. His most recent book is Super Capitalism. It's out in paperback. And Representative Ron Paul of Texas, a member of the House Financial Services Committee and the Joint Economic Committee. He's also the author of End of the Fed. What do you make, of, we'll start with you, Robert, of the freezing of domestic programs for three years? Uh, I don't think it makes much sense, Larry, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the government, under the circumstances we now face, is the purchaser of last resort. Consumers are not buying. They're still scared for good reason. Uh, businesses are not investing very much. They don't want to invest as if they're not consumers out there. So government has got to spend. You know, this is something that a lot of people have difficulty understanding because you don't want bigger deficits in the long term. But in the short term, government has got to spend more to get the economy moving, to get jobs so people can actually uh, work and generate a larger economy and therefore get the outside budget, the long-term budget down. Uh, so having a freeze right now on discretionary spending uh, and uh, effectively saying to the world, to, the, uh, to Wall Street, to the country, we're not going to do any more deficit spending uh, makes absolutely no sense. Right. Mr. Congressman Paul, your thought? Well, I don't think Mr. Rice has too much to worry about. <laughs> Nothing's going to be frozen in, in Washington, D.C. Matter of fact, even what Obama's saying is not going to go into effect for a year, and the Congress won't let it happen. I think Mr. Uh, Rice's uh, sentiments are uh, well represented in Washington. They're uh, because I actually want to see more money spent, not less. It's just that who has the discretion to spend it? That's the issue. When the government spends it, they malinvest, they misdirect it. They can't direct capital correctly. It isn't a, uh, we don't have our problem because there's not been enough consumption, enough spending. We had too much, we borrowed, we're in debt. So that is not going to solve the problem. What we should have done is maybe suspend the income tax for three years. It would have cost us less than no. bailing out the big banks and all these special interests. Okay. I mean, there'd been more money than the people could make a decision on whether they should okay. liquidate their debt or how they would invest, and this would be uh, a wiser choice. Larry, let, uh, me, let, me, let me agree with the stimulus. Let me agree with the, okay, let me agree with the Congressman. With that quickly, Robert. Well, I just want to agree with the congressman on one point, and that is uh, bailing out the big banks instead of uh, helping Main Street uh, it was, uh, was a, a version of trickle-down economics, and it doesn't work. Okay. We're scheduled to discuss the stimulus, and we'll begin by showing you an interview with Diane Sawyer that aired on ABC tonight, the president making his case for his handling of the economy. Let's listen. We have stopped the economic contraction. The economy is growing again. And we did create or save several million jobs. That's not my opinion. That's the opinion of conservative economists as well as liberal economists. But we still lost seven million jobs and so the, you know i understand why the american people their attitude is not it could have been worse their attitude is how do we make sure that we keep on getting it better and that's what we'll be talking about on wednesday okay simply put robert is the stimulus working same question for both of you start with robert uh, well, I think unemployment and the official unemployment rate, Larry, would be about 13% now were it not for the stimulus. For all the reasons I just gave you, when everybody else has stopped spending, uh, government is the spender of last resort. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't guarantee. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen next year. But I think that we probably, given the fact that the states are, in effect, mounting an anti-stimulus package because they are raising taxes and they are cutting jobs and cutting services, we're probably going to have to rely on more from the federal government. Ron? Well, I think it's real hard to measure the number of jobs saved or not. I, I think the stimulus obviously helped Wall Street. Wall Street's doing uh, very, very well. Uh, but to, to say the stimulus was, stimulus was the answer and just do more of it uh, fails to recognize that government spends money, it actually does help the GDP. But there's a big difference if people get money, save money, and it's invested.
uh, building cars or something versus when the government takes the money and spends it on a make work job or spends money on a weapon system that gets blown up overseas or bombs blown up overseas it, that raises the GDP but right now the happiest people are Wall Street the very people who got bailed out in Main Street and the in the employment numbers these people are very unhappy but I do think it's a stretch to say that they know exactly the number of jobs that they saved and like you pointed out Larry, okay. there are actually a lot I mean the president pointed out there are a lot less jobs available right now. And we'll pick up on that in a moment. All week long, CNN is breaking down how the $787 billion stimulus money is being spent. We're calling it the Stimulus Project. And you can get more in-depth information on all this at CNN.com slash stimulus. More with Ron Paul and Robert Wright. We're back talking about whether President Obama's $787 billion stimulus is a success or a failure. With Robert Reich and Ron Paul, let's take a call. Hobart, Indiana. Hello. Hello, Larry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my question is for the senator. Go ahead. And, and the uh, congressman. Go ahead. Uh, President Obama spent more in his uh, first year of his presidency than uh, Bush spent in his last term. Uh, and to put this spending freeze on now, is that, uh, I mean, is he trying to act like a populist now or is he uh, pivoting uh, to the right? <laughs> well, I, I think that the fact that it isn't even going to go into effect in 2011, I would say there, there's a little bit of politicking going on, and I just don't believe there will be a freeze. And if they did freeze at a high level, that would be very bad. I'm not necessarily for a freeze. I, I want to uh, reduce spending. I want to uh, save tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars overseas and bring that money back home uh -huh. so that more of this money can flow into education and medicine and different things. So I want a lot of cuts, but I want the people to spend money. But when the government spends money on a job, they may create a job, but what you don't see is you might have taken a better, more productive, longer lasting job away from the productive uh, wow. economy. So even if you can prove there's been a couple extra jobs, it doesn't really solve our problem. Robert, are you generally optimistic in this climate? I, I wish I, I, I could be optimistic, Larry. I, I see the extent of joblessness, uh, the extent of misery, homelessness, uh, or people who are worrying about losing their homes and their savings. Uh, and frankly, I worry. I look to 2011 and I say to myself, once the stimulus ends, as it will, and if there is a spending freeze, and if the Fed does what the Fed is likely to do, and that is uh, tighten and raise interest rates, where is the motivation going to come? Where is the energy? Where is the demand going to come from in our economy? Uh, because again, consumers and businesses and exports just can't lift the economy by themselves. I wish I could be as optimistic as, uh, as Ron Paul about uh, the capacity of, 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 of the country to just pull money out of national defense and bring it home and give it to consumers as tax breaks. I, it all sounds good, uh, but I, I'll tell you, I don't know too many Republicans who want to take money out of national defense. Acosta Mesa, California, quickly. Yes, is it possible to change the econo economy ultimately without getting out of these uh, trade deals that we have, WTO and and all these trade deals we have with China and, and the rest of the world, do we have to get out of those? To all Ron? Well, I don't think you have to. Some of those things we would get out of, but I think the problem with what Mr. Rush says is uh, is, uh, is is that the country is bankrupt is our problem. And if I am bankrupt or somebody else is bankrupt, what they do is they have to pull back. They have to quit spending. They have to work harder. They have to pay off their debt. And, w and we have dreamed up this concoction under Keynesian economics that you don't have to do that. You just print more money, run up more deficits, and pass it out, and everybody is going to do the right thing. So it's the opposite thing of what Austrian free market economy, economics teaches. They say what you should do is liquidate debt, get rid of the malinvestment, start over again, get the prices of houses down, don't prop the prices up and stimulate okay. houses. So Robert, what I see is we're doing we exactly only... the opposite than what we should do. Robert, we've got uh, Larry, 30 seconds. Uh... Uh, Larry, Ron Paul sounds an awful lot like Herbert Hoover. In 1932, Herbert Hoover and his Secretary of Treasury, uh, Mellon, uh, said liquidate everything and uh, everything will be fine. It, it took Franklin D. Roosevelt and ultimately the Second World War to show everybody that Keynesianism <laughs> was right. you got to spend and if you've got to go into debt to get people back to work, that's better than not doing it. All right, we will call on these gentlemen well, again. You know, what Maybe tomorrow. We're out of time, guys. <laughs> Robert okay. Reich and Congressman Ron Paul, I'm as sorry about <laughs> it as you are, but we are.